On the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun finally broke through the clouds, and Sonneman's candy store officially opened. The mayor came feeling better than had felt in days. The young wives came dressed in beautiful smiles. The farmers came eager to trade grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wish had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store. But they shared something more, something bigger, something better. On that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane. They told of the miracle of Christ's birth, the misery of his death, and the mercy of his love. The History of the Candy Cane The traditional candy cane was born over 350 years ago when mothers used white sugar sticks as pacifiers for their babies. Around 1670, the choir master of Cologne Cathedral in Cologne, Germany, bent the sticks into canes to represent a shepherd's staff. He then used these white candy canes to keep the attention of small children during the long nativity service. The use of candy canes during the Christmas service spread throughout Europe. In Northern Europe, sugar canes decorated with sugar roses were used to brighten the home at Christmas time. In the mid 1800s, the candy cane arrived in the United States with a German-Swedish immigrant in Worcester, Ohio, decorated his spruce tree with paper ornaments and white sugar canes. The red stripe was added to the candy cane at the turn of the century, when peppermint and wintergreen were added and became the traditional flavors for the candy cane. Some sources say that a candy maker in Indiana developed the candy cane as a witness of Christ's love, while we may never know the full history of the candy cane, we can share in the truth behind its symbol, the truth of Christ's birth and redemption, and the gift of his love.